Greetings, I'm Charlotte Kriska and welcome back to my Aunt Boot Project. This is the final video in me making an outfit for the opening day of Avengers Campus. Now this video will be broken down into two parts. The first part will be sort of vlog style where you'll see me finishing up the skirt as well as me at opening day of Avengers Campus. And then the second part of the video will be me more in depth explaining how the transformation part works. So if you don't wanna see the magic of how the transformation works, I'll put a little indicator in the video before that part begins. So it won't, the magic won't be ruined for you, which is a big thing with Disney. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this final installment of my Aunt Boot Project. That's the pile of all the things that need to be ironed. That's a pile of things that are getting lights put into it. That's a pile of things that are done and waiting their partners. That's the extra fabric to remake the handkerchief. And that's a cat. And then that's a pile of everything that I need to pack. <laughs> for tomorrow to drive down. Yay! Hello, voiceover Charlotte here. I realized that I never actually explained what I was doing in this clip. Um, it's actually an important part and it kind of is explained later in this video, but for now I'm just gonna briefly go over it. So that was a rhinestone bead and a pin. Um, not like your kind of like normal straight pins, it's more of a jewelry pin where there's a flat head on one side and then it's open on the other and you use pliers for the ends like I'm doing right here and that is going to help me sew this onto the skirt because these little things are crucial for the transforming part of the skirt and you'll see a little more of what exactly they do to help that process later in this video. Hello everybody, and welcome to my crib. Um, current workstation. Are you really a cosplayer if you've never done this in your hotel room? I have before. I didn't think this would be a thing that would happen the first time I come go on a trip after the pandemic, but here we are. Here we are. I, I just got here. I might get food. I might not. I might just sew instead. No, I will get food. And then see what happens with this. I did bring my backup plan in case I don't finish this. But at this point, I, it's, it's a determination to get it done. So we'll see what happens. I did discover that there is no iron or ironing board, probably due to pandemic reasons, or there just isn't one in the room. I'm not sure. I could ask the front desk for one, but I, I don't like talking to people, so probably not going to do that. Although it does really need to be ironed. Hot car, cotton fabric, lots of wrinkles. It's a skirt, like there's no way to lay it down so that I wouldn't get wrinkles, you know? You know, yeah, we'll see what happens. I might ask on the way back from getting food because I will do that. Yeah, okay. okay I wanted to give a fun little update. Was the only way to really get into the land is 
only sure way to get into the land is to have a boarding pass for web slingers. And so I didn't get one at seven. And then almost before noon, some guest relations cast members, AKA Plaid, they stopped me because they liked my skirt and I showed them how it transformed and then they said to just wait next to them as I tried to get a boarding pass at noon for the web slingers because they asked if I'd been in the land yet and I hadn't and then once my friend confirmed that we got a boarding pass one of the plaids that was waiting there managed to help get me a better group number or a confirmed group number so that I can get into the land for sure. Because at this point, I didn't know if that was gonna happen. Because when I first got into California Adventure, there were lines everywhere, and like I kept asking what the different lines were for, and no one was really clear on what they were for. And so, to calm myself down, I went over on Soren, which worked. So I was about to have a panic attack. And I've had one at Disney World before, so. Yeah, so it, it's all gonna work out. Now I just have to wait for my friends to get in here because they had parked off a starting in Disneyland. But we'll for sure get into Avengers Campus today on opening day with the outfit on. It's like I planned it or something. So that was the footage from me at opening day of Avengers Campus. And now I'm gonna go over how the skirt works. So if you want to keep that magical and not know the magic behind the transforming skirt, then go ahead and stop watching now. Thank you for watching the vlog portion of this video if you're stopping now, but if you're continuing on, let's go. So I'm going to explain how it works how it works. So here is the skirt. There is one waistband and under the bodice is another waistband so that and then there's the stays. So that's the waistband. That's the main one that holds the weights of the skirt and it's a pretty heavy skirt. 
and then this goes over top that one and this one goes on top of that. So this is the moving waistband and it has a satin lining because satin is more slicker, creates less friction. So over time, as I keep doing the transformation, it won't pill and it will keep being smooth and make sure that the transformation is smooth. And because it's happening on top of this satin top, which is also smooth, there's not a lot of friction so that the whole transformation is nice and smooth. Then we come on to what I call the flappy bits. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of like blinds. If you've ever had those like plastic, these are curtains, but if you've ever had like the plastic vertical blinds that like you can turn them so that they're this way and they're like connected in the middle to like the rail and then you can like open them and then push them all to the side. They flap pull them back out and you can turn them either way and they're kind of curved. I've broken many of those, <laughs> worse things, but great idea for transforming skirt base. So let me go back down. So we have our flappy panels. They are attached to the moving waistband with these little rhinestone beads. So why why these one a little bit of sparkle you know why not but also they have a little hole i'm gonna try to show this this is gonna get this is gonna get complicated probably should have taken this off but okay so you can see the little pinhead right there these rhinestones have a hole in them but they also have a hole going this horizontally so i can sew that into the waistband but there's still a hole going vertically where this pin can go through. And then this pin has a loop at the end of it that I created with some pliers. And that is then sewn into the edge, the outer edge of the flappy bits, if that makes sense. So that, so that the pin can easily spin around, that was loose. So the pin can easily spin around inside the rhinestone bead. And the, and the fact that it can spin around is really important because if it was stationary, the skirt wouldn't turn and lay flat and show like that it looks like a completely different skirt. You'd be able to tell because it would like fold over at the edges. So having a pin being able to pivot all around was really important. Now the flappy bit, as we saw, is secured to the base skirt. So there's one side, there's the other side. And the base skirt is connected to the main waistband. So you can see the satin lining there, that's gray, of the moving waistband, and then that's the main waistband that's holding the weight of the skirt, which is bigger and has interfacing in it so that it's reinforced so that it can support the skirt. I've worn this to the parks now twice, and I have done a couple of videos and photos in between. Um, so it's gotten a lot of twirling action and a lot of you know, transforming has happened so many times, especially on opening day, because people kept wanting to see it, which <sighs> so good, loved it. And I hope to get much more use out of it. I really want to wear it to a dapper day. So now I'm going to show you. So now I'm going to show you how the transformation works in kind of slow motion. So you can kind of get an easier image of it. So here we have skirt. Now in order for this to work and to make it smoothly, this is the Bugs Land slide. In order to transform from Bugs Land into Avengers Campus, you have to hire a lot of Imagineers and have them working for several years, not even at the land, building up all these buildings and plans and doing concept. Okay, kidding. <laughs> in order to transform the outfit into Avengers Campus, I have to spin my body this way so the opposite way, so like the opening side of where the flaps 
open towards, I have to spin that way, but I have to shift the moving waistband this way so that everything will lay nice and flat and that these pins will end up over here displaying the Avengers Campus side perfectly. So let me show you, make it a little closer, in slow motion. So I'm spinning my body this way and turning the waistband that way. And you can see it bunching up now. And so now it's all the way shifted over and clearly you can see that the panels are all like pleated weirdly now and that's because I didn't spin fast. Spinning fast is also part of the transformation. It's not just a diversion technique, it is also helping the fabric move. It spin, it pulls the fabric out with centripetal force, centripetal, cent with physics, <laughs> it spins the fabric out and that kind of helps it lay flat so that when I do the flip over, the force, because I was turning to the opening side, the force of it will help flip the flaps. So it all works together for a cohesive transformation. And then I'm going in my living room to finish the spin. So then now, I can do this too. Now I'm in Avengers Campus. Mostly. Sometimes they do get stuck because the skirt is so long. So, in order to go from Avengers Campus to Bugs Land, I now have to, now that the flaps are open on this side, I have to spin my body that way, but to move the waistband that way. So, once again, I'll kind of do a close up of the shifting. So it shifted. And then when I go fast and spin fast, it transforms over, mostly. And now I'm on the bugs land side again. Now I'm on the bugs land side again. Hopefully that was easy to follow and that it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, feel free to leave a comment question down below or find me on Instagram and DM me. If you wanna make a transforming outfit just like this, you have no clue how I did it even though I tried to break it down. Um, feel free to reach out to me. I would gladly discuss it because I think transforming outfits are super cool and I hope other people will also make more transforming outfits because they're always a showstopper. So like seeing that in like everyday wear or at Disneyland where people are starting to kind of dress up again for going to the parks and Disney bounding, I'm here for it, please. <laughs> And that's it. That's my transforming dress for Avengers Campus opening day. I'm really, really thrilled with how it turned out that I was able to wear a mostly completed project at Avengers Campus for the opening day. I, I, am, I am very sad that Bugs Land is, is gone, but I love Marvel. So seeing what they've done with Avengers Campus thus far because it's been around for almost a year. I'm gonna ignore how long it took me to get these videos out. <laughs> but I am excited for the future of it. I'm, yes, very sad that Bugs Land is gone, but as Walt said, Disneyland will never be complete. It will always keep adapting and changing. You know, it makes sense. I would like to thank you all for watching. Um, whether you watched all the parts or just this part to figure out how the transforming works. I just hope that maybe you learned something from this, whether it's how to make your own transforming skirt of this style, or just that everything is not what it seems to be, and that can even translate into fashion and clothing and costumes and Disney bounds. And one of the big reasons why I started a YouTube channel was to not only document how I made these things for myself 
in the future to look back on, but also to help hopefully maybe inspire others to think as strangely and out of the box as I do about things. You don't have to, obviously, but I hope that I can inspire somebody or just at the very least entertain people. There's a lot of things happening this year now that the pandemic is winding down and I have lots of things planned. Will all of them happen? Probably not, but I still remain hopeful that I'll be able to accomplish a lot of crazy new things in the coming future. So thank you for watching and I'll see you with the next project.